So when we are building a custom car audio system, we might incorporate a DSP. A DSP allows us to completely tune an audio signal before that signal goes to our amplifier. But David L recently asked, with a DSP, is it good to continue using the subwoofer outputs on the head unit? In other words, should we use this output or should we get signal directly from the DSP? What's going on guys, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And in this video, I wanna cover the pros and cons of the different options for getting a signal into your subwoofer amplifier from an aftermarket head unit. So before we get started, I do wanna say a quick thank you to our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. If you're looking for a compact subwoofer amplifier that has great sound quality, you're going to wanna check out the ACM-1.300. This compact amp does 175 watts RMS at four ohms and 300 watts RMS at two ohms. Better yet, it has AccuBase built in, which allows us to fight factory bass roll off. Along with that, it has the great turn on feature. It also has a gain setting light, a ton of different features. If you guys wanna learn more about this compact amplifier, definitely check out the link down in the video description. So this topic is a common question I get, and I think I might know where some of the confusion may stem from, but let's start with the basics. To explain this all to you guys, I've got three different pieces of gear here. I've got an aftermarket head unit, I have a digital signal processor, a DSP, and then I have a subwoofer amplifier. We're looking at the back of our aftermarket head unit right now, and we have six different RCA outputs. We have a left and right front output, we have a left and right rear output, and everyone's pretty familiar with those. Obviously, those would be for your front speakers and your rear speakers, but where things get confusing is that additional output for the subwoofer signal. Front and rear signal is straightforward, so I've made those connections just to get them out of the way. Now, where the confusion, I think, comes from is, first of all, people think, okay, I know that I wanna tune my mids and highs to get the best sound quality and performance, I wanna tune them using the DSP. So I wanna make sure that I definitely have the signal going through the DSP for that. But with the subwoofer signal, I think that sometimes folks think, okay, well, that's for the bass. I don't have to worry about the sound quality of that. So in that case, I'm just going to go straight from the head unit. I'm gonna bypass the DSP and go into the amplifier. And this is not a good idea. I think this confusion is further increased by the fact that most subwoofer amplifiers have a controller. And you definitely wanna be able to still control your bass output level, of course, but you know, a lot of DSPs also have a controller. So it's kind of confusing because I want to make sure I can use my controller here on my subwoofer amplifier, so I should just bypass the DSP, right? Again, not correct. If we look at the DSP software here, this is Audio Control's version for their DM series of processors or their D series of amps, we can see that down here, there's literally one, two, three, four, five bands of EQ at and below 80 hertz. So plenty of control that we're definitely going to want to do for our subwoofers to tune everything properly. We're going to eliminate that scenario right off the bat because guys, we definitely want to use the DSP to control our subwoofer signal that is going to our amplifier as well but there are a couple of different ways to do this. To explain these couple of different ways, first of all, I wanna get this connection out of the way. We know that we want to use a signal out of the DSP for our subwoofer amplifier, so I've already made that connection. We're gonna leave that as is, and I also, just for this example, I want you guys to assume that I also have my mids and highs outputs coming out of the DSP. It doesn't really matter for what I'm trying to explain here, but I know there's somebody that will question it, so I just wanna note that, just pretend there's RCAs connected here, going to a different amplifier for the mids and highs. So the first way we can make sure that we get a subwoofer signal through the DSP and to our subwoofer amplifier is to actually not even connect those subwoofer outputs at all. Wait, what the heck are you talking about, Mark? Let's go over to the DSP software, but for now, I want you to remember that we have inputs one and two fed from the front left and right signal out of our head unit. That's important because we need to know it when we're setting up our DSP software. Now again, this is audio control software. There's obviously other companies of software out there, but this feature is something that you can do on virtually every DSP. And what that is, is right now I'm looking at the outputs seven and eight. So that's what's connected to my subwoofer amplifier. What I can tell the DSP is I can tell the DSP where I want the signal to come from for those outputs. So for this first example here, what I can do is click one and two. By selecting that button, I've made a link. In other words, I've told the DSP that I want whatever's feeding channels one and two to be linked to outputs seven and eight. 
Now you might be wondering if we have a bunch of different frequencies, let's say a full range signal, in other words, 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, if we have that coming in on channels one and two, how does that work if you need that channel one and two going out on your mids and highs amp, but you also need it going out on your subwoofer amp? On our mids and highs amp, if we change to channels one and two, what we can do is we can control our crossover output right here. So I can, in this case, let's say that channels one and two are going to be fed to a mids and highs amplifier for our front speakers. I could have that going this is just as an example, I can adjust it obviously, but I could have that going from 90 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. In other words, our mid bass region to our mids and our highs. Now, if we switch back to our output seven and eight, which is for our subwoofer amplifier, this is where we're going to need to make an adjustment here. We want to go all the way down into the subwoofer bass frequencies, and then we want the upper end of our range. Let's adjust this and type in a value here, let's say 90 hertz. So by making those changes in the software, we've divided up this full range signal that's coming in and now we've split it so we have 90 hertz and above going out outputs one and two, and then we have 90 hertz and below going out channels seven and eight for our subwoofer. Now, if you are doing that option where you're not using the subwoofer outputs, you're going to wanna make sure that you pay attention to the crossover settings on your head unit. As an example, let's pretend that we're currently looking at our crossover settings for the front output on the head unit. If we were using an 80 hertz high pass crossover like this is set up right now, that means we wouldn't have any of that base information going out on those front outputs. That's important to know because if you don't have any bass coming out on this output going into the DSP, you're not going to have any bass coming out of it going to your subamp. If you are setting up your system this way, it's probably best to turn off the crossovers on the head unit and just use the crossovers on the DSP for ease of system design. Now, while we're still talking about this option, let's quickly talk about what you would wanna do for your remote control. Which remote are you going to want to use? The one connected to the DSP or the one connected directly to your subwoofer amplifier. For most DSP softwares out there, what we can do is on our outputs, we can determine what outputs we want to be impacted by our level controller. So right now we're currently on channel seven and eight, and let's say that I want to use the level controller in order to control outputs seven and eight, thus controlling the subwoofer base. So in this case, I'm gonna go down here to level and I'm gonna turn it on. Now notice that I don't have that level option turned on for any of the other outputs. So what that means is only channels seven and eight are going to be impacted by the controller. So theoretically, I could still use this as a base level controller, but it's redundant. There's really no point if this is the way that I'm setting up my system, I can just simply use this controller. And other than just being redundant, the number one reason I recommend setting up things this way is a lot of times on the DSP controller right here, this DSP control knob, we can change between our different presets. On this particular one, you press in and then you can rotate. And based on the number of flashes, you'll know Know what preset you are on out of four different options. So by using this more advanced DSP controller, we can switch those presets. You could have a preset that's based on a tune when only you are in the vehicle, a one seat tune. You could have a second preset that has a different tune based on when you have two people in the vehicle. That's just an example for some different presets, but it's much better to use just this setup here, in my opinion, when you're wanting to control your sub amp. So the main advantage of this system setup that we just described is we don't have to run an RCA wire from the head unit to the DSP. And technically the only reason to have front going to channels one and two and rear going to channels three and four is if we want to retain the fade capabilities of our head unit. As an example, let's say we have the kids in the back seat and we're listening to some Coco Melon and we only want them listening to those jams in the back. The fade would allow us to turn down our front speakers via the head unit, and then we could simply have only the rears playing through the DSP. But technically, if the fade capability was something that we weren't worried about and we only wanted to mess around with running one RCA wire between these two devices, technically we could get rid of this second RCA wire and we could still feed a signal to our rear speakers. Let's say our rear speakers are on outputs three and four out of the DSP, we could just tell them to also sum from inputs one and two. 
But what if we wanna keep our fade so we're okay with having channels one and two output go into one and two, and then the rear outputs three and four going into three and four. And what if we're also okay with running that subwoofer RCA? So we've got our subwoofer outputs out of the head unit into our channels seven and eight here on the DSP. Well, the way we would change things on our setup here, let's look at outputs one and two, which are for the front. Those are linked to inputs one and two, which makes sense. Now let's look at our outputs three and four for the back speakers. We now want those fed from signal three and four. And then for output seven and eight, which goes to our subwoofer amplifier. In this case, we wanna feed that also from seven and eight. As a quick side note, the reason I skipped over channels five and six is these are the mono input signals on this particular DSP. What that means is some aftermarket head units only have a mono output for the subwoofer. In that case, you could connect that mono output into a mono input. And even in the software, we could also sum these up, but just for clarity's sake and to keep things simple on the software here with the way things look, I just have everything connected to seven and eight for the subs. Now, how is this second system setup option any different? Well, first of all, obviously we are running a wire for that subwoofer signal that we didn't wire before, but the other difference lies within the head unit. A lot of head units will give us the ability to turn off the subwoofer output right here on the interface for the head unit. So that seems pretty handy, right? You can turn off your subwoofer. What's worth noting is this is only turning off the signal to your subwoofer amplifier. That doesn't mean that your amplifier for your subwoofer is actually going to turn off. It just means you're no longer sending that amp signal. But hold on, let's think about this for a second. Remember that we set up our system so that our DSP controller can turn down just the output of the subwoofer. So if you're thinking to yourself, man, I like the idea of being able to turn off my subwoofer, Remember, you're only turning off the subwoofer signal output there, and you can do that exact same thing by just turning down the subwoofer here at the DSP level. The other feature we can keep using if we do have an RCA plugged into the subwoofer output of our head unit is our subwoofer settings. And you'll notice that our subwoofer settings are simply just the phase and the ability to control the crossover for the subwoofer. But hold on, let's think about this again. Here I am at the DSP software, and let's not forget that I can set my crossover level, which is something that you're usually just going to set once and then you're done with it. I can set that crossover level here in the DSP software, so it's really not a value being able to do it on the head unit. And as far as phase goes or polarity, oh, check that out. We can switch that here at the tuning level as well. And again, that's something that, in my opinion, you don't really mess with. When you're doing your system tuning, you're going to figure out which phase or polarity works best. You're gonna set it once and forget it anyway. So we're going to have all this control still. It's not like we're really losing features. We're just doing it inside the DSP. So the question becomes, is either of the two options that I explained better? Is one better than the other? Both setup options allow us to achieve the same end result. It's just a matter of personal preference. In my opinion, I like to just stay with the front and rear RCA connections. So having four signals going into the DSP. A couple reasons for that. One, that's one less RCA wire that I have to run from the front to rear of the vehicle and hide underneath the carpet. It's one less long RCA wire that I have to purchase. And the other thing that's nice is there are RCA wires out there that have four conductors like this. So you can run just this one simple RCA path if you needed to from the front to rear of the vehicle if your DSP was mounted in the rear. I will point out though, if you do plan to go this route and you're not going to use the subwoofer outputs out of the head unit, do keep in mind, you definitely want to make sure that the RCA outputs on the front signal here that you're using or the rear are more than capable of going all the way down to sub bass frequencies. In other words, you wanna have coverage all the way down to 20 Hertz. So there we have it, David, not necessarily a right or wrong way, just pros and cons to the different options. Now, if you guys have questions about car audio, post them up down below and we'll see if we can get to them in a future video. Don't forget, next time you need a high quality subwoofer amplifier that has a compact size, definitely check out the audio control ACM-1.300. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A special thanks to audio control for being a channel sponsor and a thank you to Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching.